Welcome to Classic Car Cave. Um, unfortunately, there's no update on the engine, and that's for a very good reason. Um, there's been a, a, a death in Max's family. In fact, it, it was his wife who died um, about two weeks ago. Um, she had a brain hemorrhage and uh, was taken off to hospital and never regained consciousness and died uh, Saturday last week. Not Saturday, just gone the Saturday before. So obviously his, uh, um, my issues with the engine is fairly, pretty small down the line of course. So I obviously didn't want to bother him in his time of grief and um, I sent my condolences and there wasn't much else I could say. So I've taken the carburetor out, what I'm going to do is, is uh, I'm going to take the jets out and just see what they are because I don't know what the actual sizes are in this. Now if you, if you look at this carburetor you can see it's actually uh, the, the name of it is actually um, uh, a man, Mangolesti. Man, Mango Mango I should imagine it's Italian. It, it's very much the same as a Weber carburetor. It's set up the same way. I mean, uh, Solex and a few other companies have obviously used the same design. But what I'll do is, is I'll see if I can get these jets out and see see what's causing the problem because it definitely was over fuel and there's no doubt about that. So I've taken off the uh, the inlet manifold here. Everything seems okay. And what I'll do is I'll just check. So the 40, 45, 50, whatever is actually the size of the butterfly opening or the orifice size. So if I measure this now in, in millimeters, of course, that should be Forty-four point eight six. So, so they're forty-five. Um, yeah. So the only thing I can see is that's a bit loose, which it wasn't. So there's something happening there with the gasket. It's either worn or or it's been vibrating and damaged it. Um, and the only other thing is, as I say, is the bottom of this uh, where it's obviously been overflowing, and you can see where the oil is on it. And I'll show you in the car as well. So as you can see there, there's quite a sticky mess underneath there. That's obviously, uh, uh, it's been overflowing and, and then with the heat from the exhaust, whatever, it's got a bit gummy in there. Um, you can see obviously the, I had to make this special area. This one comes out as well. Uh, it's just a plate with some silver. The idea was to try and throw as much and as you can see there, there's the vent on the side. And there's another one on that side there, so it's coming up that tube. Comes, yeah, comes in here up that tube and into there. Not exactly ram air, but it's clean air, and it's above and off the track, so it should help. And that little indentation, I had to do it afterwards because there wasn't enough for this ITG uh, air filter. It was getting caught just here, so we had to uh, make that little piece there. So that's the reason it's in it, it was an afterthought. Uh, for those of you who are interested or not interested, now I might pronounce this very badly because even though I live near Italy, I don't speak it like I don't in German, like I don't German either. But DCOE is, uh, is doppio corpo horizontally and the E is for standard. So basically it's uh, a double side draft carb or double body uh, carburetor but side drive so this is side obviously this way the IDF is actually the other side it's inverted doppio so it's inverted double which go down that way you see a lot of ones where they go straight down and uh, now originally the Webers were only were made in Italy and I believe now they're made in Madrid in Spain um, so I've done some checking these main jets are F8 so if anybody out there uh, Richard, the guys that do performance minis and stuff like that. If somebody's out there that does know these stuff, now this, as I said, it's a, a, a Mangalesti. So I would imagine it's it's a copy of a Weber. I would imagine, but to be honest, the price doesn't look that much difference. But I'm, maybe Weber's better. Um, it's a better known name, and everybody calls them Weber's anyway. But this is an F8, and it's a 160, and that's that main jet. So I've taken that 160 off that tip. 
and the F8 from here, from that tube. And the, these chokes, or the, the smaller ones, the smaller idle jets, they are F855, that might be 5.5, I'm not sure. So if anybody could give me any information on that and what I should be looking for. I'm not an expert in carbs, um, I mean, I'm just a general mechanic, but uh, I don't know these uh, particular ones. And, and I've just always called it a weather, and I think most people do, whether it's Solex or whatever, because it's, it's a weather setup, or the, the operation is pretty much the same. Anyway, so I'll again, uh, once I find out what the situation is with Max, hopefully this week he'll contact me back and let me know what the situation is, and, um, and then we can go on from there. Uh, we'll do some tests, and I'll check. I'll take this carb over to him and, and see what the situation is and uh, and we can go from there. Hopefully the situation will be, we'll just need a rebore to 1330 from 1310. We put new pistons in it, Amiga pistons in it, but I, I think if we can go 1330 we'll go with a sort of 6mm hemi hemisphere uh, piston top uh, instead of a flat top, uh, which will bring the compression down quite a lot. And obviously, if we're in there, we're going to check the mains and the main bearings and the big end bearings. Well, everything, basically, even the gudgeon pins. Um, and for the sake of a set of shells and uh, and a uh, complete set of shells, which is probably, you know, anything from 100 to 120 euros, whatever it is, isn't worth messing around. Um, and, and I'll get a complete kit. Um, so I think probably that's the way to go. Uh, regardless of whether we, when we take the crank out, because we want to make, make sure the crank's not damaged in any way. Um, I mean, if the shells are damaged, that's fine. But as long as the crank and uh, everything else is good, um, and and the thrust washers as well, because uh, they obviously get damaged as well, being copper faced. So I make sure then thrust washers are right, and and actually the the end float's good and everything else. So there's quite a lot of checking to do, and I will bring, come back to you and let you know what the results of that are. And then we'll go from there. And hopefully by the start of uh, 25, the start of the season, we can have the car back up and running again. Uh, perhaps just with a bigger displacement. But um, we really need to nut down what the problems are with this. So on that note, as usual, stay safe, keep the faith, enjoy your hobby. And as soon as I have info, I'll let you know. So take care everybody, be good to each other. Bye for now.